So we can look at taking out the greatest common factor of a polynomial. Now we're actually going to look at the next step. After we've done that, how do we start to factor trinomials? So this is the first case that we're going to look at. Trinomials of that form, x squared plus some constant times x plus c, some other constant. So x squared plus bx plus c. x squared plus bx plus c. In each of these cases, and all of the cases that we're going to deal with in this section, what is our leading coefficient? So the number on the front of x squared in this case is 1. And that's a nice case to have because it automatically tells us one part of the factor. But we'll get to that a little bit later. So we know how to multiply. Let's take a look at these again and just see how they result once we've simplified it. So we have the FOIL. So I get first will give me x squared outer 5x, inner 2x, and then the last plus 10. And after that, we want to be able to simplify, combining our like terms in the middle. So I've got x squared, 7x's, and 10 on the end. So it fits this form that we are going to look at, this first case. Let's look at another one. Same constant, same variable, but I'm changing these signs. So what's going to be different? So again, first, we'll give me x squared. That's the same. Outer minus 5x. Inner minus 2x. And what is my last term? Negative 2 times negative 5 will give me positive 10. So these two parts stayed the same, but my middle term, when I simplify, now I have negative 7 factors of x. But again, still fits that form, x squared plus bx plus c. But our constant is negative in that case. So we're going to be looking at the reverse. Starting with this trinomial, how do I get back here to a product of two things? So the nice thing, again, about this form is we've got a 1 out on the front. So whenever we see that, we automatically know I'm going to have an x and an x for my first terms because when I FOIL and do first, I get out x squared every single time. So whenever there's a 1 out on the front, x and an x, and then we just have to figure out the other two pieces. So we're going to work through a bunch of these examples. And first, we want to label a couple of these, talking about them. So the product of binomials, I've got two terms and two terms. If I multiply two binomials, what comes out? A trinomial. When they're in this form, it doesn't always work out to be a trinomial. But for these cases, it does. The coefficient of x in the trinomial, so just the plain x, it's the sum of those two constant terms. So we can see negative 7x was a sum of negative 2, negative 5. My middle term here, positive x, was a sum of 5 and 2, each of those terms. And then the constant term on the end in the trino trinomial was what? The product of those constant terms. Product. Multiplying them together. In every single case, it works out like that because we're foiling to get to this trinomial, so we need to go backwards to the product of binomials. So let's just practice with a few. It's a lot of information, but once we do a few, you'll get the hang of it. So, factoring this trinomial of our nice form, I have a 1 out on the front. So automatically, I know I'm going to have an x and an x for the first terms in my binomial product. Okay, because when I do FOIL, First, I get x squared. All right. So now we need to work towards what constants we need here. So we always look at the end value, and we need to break up 6 into factors that are going to multiply to 6, add to 5. So when we're foiling, we multiply them to get our end term, and we add them to get our middle term. So I like to break off on the side and write down some factors of 6 till I hit the right combo. 
uh, for my constants. So, 1 and 6 is my first option. If I multiply them, I get 6. But if I add them, do I get 5? No, it's too big. So we need to look at another factor. Next is going to be 2. 2 times 3 will give me 6. And if I add them, will it give me 5? Yes. So we know how to fill in these holes. I need a factor of 2 and a factor of 3. Then the last thing we have to deal with, sometimes the first thing, depending on the order you like to go in, is the signs. What do I need to plug in here? Plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus. We've got a couple different options. So when I multiply these two, I need my value to be positive. So that tells me it's either a plus, plus, or a minus, minus. And additionally, when we add them, I need it to be positive. So what does that tell me about these two signs? They both have to be positive. All right. And we can always check. Check by foiling. So if I multiply this out, do I actually get back to my original trinomial? Let's see. So first will give me x squared. Always, working towards that first term. Outer, I get positive 3x. Inner, another 2x, combining to give me 5. And 2 times 3, plus 6. So do we get our original trinomial? Yes. We always have a check. All right, let's look at another one with some different signs. I still have a 1 out on the front, so I know it's going to factor into y and y. Okay, now we need to work towards the constants. So I need to look at positive 12, the number on the end, and I need to look at breaking it up to multiply to 12, add to negative 8. Multiply to 12, add to negative 8. So we can start off with 1 and 12. Okay, if I multiply them, I get 12. But will any combination, positive and negative, get me to negative 8? No, because if I make the 12 negative, okay, and I add 1, I'm not to negative 8. So that one's out. Too big. Let's try some more. 2 and 6 are my next factors. If I multiply them, I get to 12. And would any combination, positive or negative, give me 8? Yes. And what case is that? If they're both negative. Because a negative times a negative gives us a positive, still passing that test. And negative 6 plus a negative 2 gives me negative 8 in the middle. So we know, and this order doesn't matter, we could go ahead and write y minus 6 first and then y minus 2. Still going to get out the same trinomial if we FOIL it. But again, we can always check. Check and make sure that it actually comes out to be true. So if I do first, I get y squared. Outer minus 6y. Inner minus 2y. Last, negative times a negative gives us a positive 12. So if we combine our middle two terms, did we get to our original trinomial that we're trying to factor? Yeah. So we're looking for that combo multiplying to my constant term, adding to the thing in the middle. All right, so a whole bunch to try. A through D on the next page, have at it. In each of these cases, we have one out on the front of all of the trinomials. So automatically we know it's going to factor into binomials with one factor each of our variable in the starting places. So we need to find combination of factors that multiply to 12, add to 7. And now I need it to be positive here and positive there. So when I add it, I need it to be positive. When I multiply, I need it to be positive. So that tells me both of these signs need to be positive. So let's start breaking up 12. 1 and 12 is my first option. Any combo going to give me 7? Nope. 2 and 6. If I add those together, do I get 7? No, but I'm getting closer. Next, 3 and 4. 
multiplies to give us 12, adds to give us 7. So those are our winners, 3 and 4. Or we could switch the order around. If you wrote it in this order, those are both equivalent. Multiplication is commutative. The order doesn't matter. And you can FOIL and check, make sure you got the correct um, products. All right, part B. Again, I've got a one out on the front, so I know it's going to be an X and an X. And let's take a peek at the signs. So when I add it, I need it to be negative. And when I multiply these two factors, I need it to be positive. So adding to give me negative, multiplying to give me positive. So that tells me this sign's going to be negative and this sign's going to be negative. So let's start breaking up 15. 1 and 15, if they're both negative, do we get to negative 8? It's too big. 2, just kidding, 3 and 5. That's going to be our next factors to look at. Negative 3 and negative 5. If we multiply them, we get positive 15. If we add those negatives, we get negative 8. So we can fill in those blanks. And again, order doesn't matter. You could flip around. Part C. Again, I've got a 1 out on the front, so I know it's going to be an X and an X. And I need to add to have it be positive and multiply to have it be positive. So each of these are going to be positive. How do we break up 26? I need factors that multiply to 26. Ah, oh, it's 36. Dang it, I wrote it down wrong. <laughs> Hopefully you did it correctly on your own. 36. Those will be nicer numbers. So, product multiplying to 36, adding to 13. What are we looking at? 9 and 4. If we multiply 9 times 4, we get 36. 9 plus 4, we get 13. Helps to write the problem down correctly. And again, we can FOIL it out and check. And the order doesn't matter. We could reverse that around. Last one. We're dealing with T's. I've got a 1 out on the front, so I know it's going to be T and T. And what about the signs? I need it to add to be negative, multiply to be positive. So I know this one's going to be negative, and that one's going to be negative. So how do we break up 20 into factors that multiply to 20, add to negative 9. What are we looking at? 4 and 5. And again, that order doesn't matter. We can FOIL it out and check.